Liz Crosby here with a yoga tutorial. Today we're going over Kingsha Mayanasana, the feather peacock, also known as forearm balance. I'm going to recommend a strap and a block, but if you don't have them, I'm going to dish out so many exercises in this little tutorial that you'll probably still be able to glean something from it. Uh, but if you do have the block and the strap, they are really, really useful for imprinting stabilizer muscle engagement because there's a lot of unseen actions and form balance that need to be imprinted so that you can kind of memorize those engagements. And then eventually you won't need the props, but they're always kind of, it's always kind of nice. So whenever, as a teacher, whenever I do the demo for Pinch and Mouse, it's always a nice reminder to find the engagement. So right away, let's start with the strap. Place the strap around your upper arm. So I've already made a little loop in the interest of time. I want to make these short and sweet. So strap goes around the upper arms and then you can take your block between your hands. So press out against the strap with your upper arms and press into the block with your hands. So what you're doing with the arms is called abduction abduction. So we're going away from the central axis, away from the Shishima channel, away from your central line. And then with the hands, we're doing a deduction, adduction, right? We're adding to the central line. So you want to think that you are exploding and you're imploding throughout the whole central axis of your microcosm. And that does not negate the arms, right? The arms are a part of this process. That being said, they're not used to doing this work. So be patient and you might kind of feel a little bit of lactic acid building quickly. Gently release and switch. Um, again, it, it is these specific muscle engagements that you have to train our muscles to perform, to do. And this is why the Bhagavad Gita is set on a battlefield. It's like we're training the flanks of our army, our musculature. Now strap comes our wrists and block between the elbows. So we're switching roles. And eventually, again, we utilize the strap and the block to imprint so that our arms are abducting and adducting throughout the whole unit. So we're pressing in with the elbows, adduction with the elbows, and abduction with the wrists. It is an arm workout. <laughs> again, it's, it's an unseen action. I'm not moving anywhere. I'm not doing a, a bicep curl or anything, but I am working out my arms right now. All right, and then gently release it. Whew. Good stuff. Again, this is, this is why the uh, forearm balance is so much more challenging. And, and I think most yogis can really, the, um, the headstand, it's, it's much more welcoming. And then when you get into forearm balance, you're like, what? How do people lift their head up off of the ground? It's these guys, the arms. And honestly, you should be engaging your arms a little bit in headstands. So your headstand will actually get more comfortable as your arms get stronger from forearm balance. So it's interesting to see how the different planes, being able to hold space in different planes, will actually help you in uh, holding space more effectively in the other planes. So block comes between your forearms. Uh, and we are going to make use of the wall today, that's why I set it next to the wall, but not quite yet. So block comes lengthwise, like so. Forearms will come around the block. Now squeeze the block with your forearms. Tuck your toes, hips rise up and back for your dolphin pose. Melt the heart towards the thighs, we extend the stiff arms. Now from here, squeezing the block, lift the block up and lower. Lift. And lower. So again, you can do this without the props. Very useful with the props, of course. And gently step back down. And I don't have a second block with me right now, but if you have a wider set shoulder girdle, then you can actually set two blocks next to each other, one lengthwise and one widthwise. So uh, for you dudes out there with super broad shoulders or ladies, you know. Sometimes you just got a wide set of shoulders. And we really want to make sure that our foundation is about shoulder width apart. Main thing before we actually attempt a, a semblance of forearm balance, which we're about to do next, using the wall, is when you go to do forearm balance, you have to keep in mind that this skin 
for most people is really loose. And so you might start out, I think this is where everybody has their pitfall. And then some people just completely negate it from their practice because like, I just wasn't able to do it. And sometimes it's a little tiny, minute attention to detail that can completely shift it for you. So uh, start with the elbows wrapped in a little bit like a trapezoid, and then they will slide out to a square. Really, really crucial. All right, so if you have the props, then use them. If you don't, then it's okay. You can still go without. Um, but keep in mind, since we just did the uh, arm and now the actual posture is about to be attempted, that you want to adduct and abduct with your arms. So even kind of just setting that intention, even though you don't have the props, to really, really imprint as, as much. It's okay. You can get away with not using the props today. All right, so strap comes around the upper arms, block. This is also crucial because sometimes people will do this and there's nothing wrong with it. And eventually you can do pancha with the palms pressing together, but then sometimes people get uh, almost like dependent upon this one variation. So try with the hand slap. This is another thing too. If your wrists start to cut out from doing handstands or even down dog, because down dog is handstand and other orientation, you can lower it down onto the forearms and then again you'll consciously send energy through the wrist and it will build muscle strength around the wrist to protect the wrist. Really good idea. Don't let the wrists uh, agitate you, take you out because you can uh, modify. All right, so you'll measure it out. Legs distance away from the wall. All right, and you can even have a little marker. That's where your elbows go, right? Because when I go to straight through the legs, I want my hips directly over the shoulders. So here. Now take the block, place it in between the hands. Again, the uh, index finger and thumb are wrapping around the corner of the block. So it's more of a, a space holder. What ends up happening with pincha is the elbows will start to slide out, and then the integrity of your structure becomes weakened, and you, you end up coming back down to the ground and not stabilizing. So this imprints the proper engagement. And we're training those muscles to do their job. So from here, dolphin, and then walk the feet up the wall, coming into your L shape. A couple more deep breaths here, maybe extend a leg. Really work on trying to find a straight line between the humerus bone and the rest of the spine. And then switch. You are actually pushing the floor away to send a pulse of energy down and then riding that pulse back up again. Slowly lower. And gently release. Whew. That's a nice reminder with the strap and the block. Not entirely necessary. Some people find it's a little bit claustrophobic or the strap gets in the way, especially when you're starting to work uh, hollow back and scorpion, the strap will definitely get in the way at that point. So you do eventually want to graduate away from using the props. Okay, so really work with that. Work with that until you feel comfortable. And we're going to attempt kicking that to the wall. So now turning to face the wall. This stuff is so crucial. I think a lot of times people learn Pincha Myros in the middle of the room because of really overpopulated classes, which I understand studios need to make money, but it is actually to the yogi's detriment because if you are learning this posture in the middle of the room and you don't know how to safely exit the posture, when you, your mind hits the freak out mode, then it can be a, a kind of a tricky situation. Um, because it isn't like handstand where you can just cartwheel out. Your arms are in a weird predicament, right? They're bent. They're not straight. So I highly recommend before you start working this in the middle of the room, utilize the wall and start to work your hollow back against the wall so that you know that you can safely flip over into a back bend. I know that there's some yoga instructors going to be like, oh, no, you didn't. You said that. That's okay. Like, yes, I think it's better than flipping out to the side in a forearm balance because that could cause some major issues with your shoulder cuff over time or really right in the moment, right? So uh, 
really crucial. I'm going to show you how to work into your back bend in Pajamayarasana so that you can start to kind of, and it's a process. So take your time, you're going to chisel open the space. And then when you know that you can comfortably go into your bridge, into your, what's called the way of a bridge dandasana, then you know you can do it safely in the middle of the room. And in the event that you flip over, you know it's not going to cause any impingement in your lower spine. Because that's really what you're safeguarding is the lower spine. And then when people are up there and they're not thinking, then they accidentally go off to the side. And that's when issues can happen in the shoulder joint. And you really want to be careful, right? We, we, we are <laughs> learning how to hold space again. And the upper half is really not used to holding space. Unless you were a gymnast or an acrobat. Um, but if you want to be able to activate the uppermost chakras and you're not born with psychic abilities, then um, we've got to kind of figure out how to how to navigate. And um, even people born with psychic abilities, I still think it's very useful to be able to do this stuff because you want the crown chakra connection so you can just shoot your uh, karma load <laughs> out through crown chakra. So um, again, if you want to, you can use the props. I'm not going to use it for this next part, so I'm going to set them off to the side. I like to go about a shin's distance away from the wall, so we can show you really quickly. Alignment is the key to divinity, so about a shin's distance away. And then that way you know that the wall is there, there's no fear of flipping over into a back bend. Um, and yeah, you're, you're not even going to think about going off to the side. So wanted to really make that clear because I've heard of a lot of unnecessary issues that have surmounted because of that. So again, wrap the elbows in and you can kind of do a little quick check with the loose skin on your forearms. Make sure that you're in a square, press down to the outer elbow, gaze between the thumbs, spread the fingers wide, tuck the toes, lift the hips up. And again, if you make your way up and you feel the elbows sliding out, you can bring that strap back in. If you see, and what another uh, byproduct is the hands will slide towards each other. So that's another reason why we use the block. So feel free to reintroduce the props if you need them. One leg extends up, little tiny hop takes you up. Find the wall about a shin's distance away. Again, you're pushing the floor away. This is what our arms are not used to doing. You're pushing the floor away, but also plugging in at the same time. Maybe float that other foot up. Connect the legs together at the top. Concentrate on drawing the flowing ribs together and in. Magnetize the sternum and the pubic bone towards one another. Deep Ujjayi breaths. And then slowly lower, gently release. All right, so there's your straight up and down pincha. And it's really important to have a straight up and down pincha. But so often some people will just focus on the very phallic straight up and down and they won't ever introduce the bend. And I understand we do live in a patriarchal society, <laughs> but we want to get it up past heart chakra. So. Uh, the feminine aspect is really crucial. Main thing is, uh, on the flip side, some people will just go do the straight up and down and not do the big back bend, and then some people just do the back bend. So don't, don't be either camp. <laughs> you want to be both at the same time. Um, so, and it is actually, you'll find, it is actually easier to balance once you have it, once you've figured it out. The hollow back and the scorpion are both easier, I think, to balance than the straight up and down, but do it anyways. And so don't fall into that other camp where you just do the feminine aspect, not the masculine aspect. Straight up and down will endow you with the masculine aspect, which is fortification, which is stability, which is infrastructure, which will protect your feminine aspect, right? Um, so holding space for ourselves, right? Essentially. Oh man, alright, time to get me started on the new age uh, dating. <laughs> the lovers are within. So this is some of my favorite stuff. And actually, before we begin, before we start to work into the feminine, if you do have the block, take the block lengthwise. I feel like such a block salesman every time I teach this because everybody wants to go and buy a block after they're done with. Block comes in between your scapula, your shoulder blades. Hands are on either sides of the lengthy part of the block. And then place the boniest 
process right up onto the, the uh, edge of the block. Now, tuck your toes and walk your feet in. So this is kind of the sensation that you want to get from your hollow back. This kind of, literally, it's, it's a force. It's an energetic force that you're sending directly into the stickiest part of your thoracic spine so that you can propagate and expand the heart space. That is so delicious. So that is the sensation that we're looking for. And then gently release it. Sit it down. Release the block. So again, and this stuff is pretty advanced. If you want to just work on your straight up and down for now, make sure that you have the masculine aspect supporting before you start to move and navigate into the feminine aspect. No worries. And of course, you can always heat things up with your inversion practice and then work your back bends in a more comfortable orientation until you feel ready and confident to move into this space. But it, these are some of my favorite shapes to throw in space. They feel so exquisite. Again, you're pulling the energy up and it's heating up the upper half as you're tempering the upper half of the body. Then you're gently expanding and opening up into new space. Receive those invitations as they're given. All right, so here we go. Here's the initial phase for your hollow back pincha. You can interlace your fingers, bring the knuckles right up against the floorboard. You won't need nearly as much of a hop here. Tuck your toes, walk the feet in. One leg can extend up, hop it up. Find the wall. And again, let the hips come directly to the wall as you puff the chest, just like we did with the block. So glorious. This is one of my favorite ways to gently open up the heart space. Again, your arms are doing work, so you're building the infrastructure as you're opening. And then gently release it back down. Okay, so that's the beginning. And if you're doing that, great. But I would still not flip over into a back bend just yet in the middle of the room. When you can do this next exercise safely against the wall, and sometimes I'll still do it against the wall first before I even attempt a form balance in my practice in the middle of the room. Just, it's just kind of nice to ensure that you have that space open, and in the event that you flip over into a back bend, you know that you have the space open and there's not going to be any issues at all. Um, and again, eventually over time, you can work slowly lowering down into the back bend. And so it's not a uh, unintentional flip. It's a nice, slow, gradual descent. And then you can actually also ascend and pull the feet back up into the inverted back bend. So it's, it's really, really fun to play with these, these uh, angles and these transitions. So hopefully it brings you as much, uh, as much joy as it brings me. <laughs> I know I totally geek out on this stuff because it's like, Metaphysics! <laughs> so you'll give yourself enough space to maybe drop one foot down and then one foot can stay on the wall as the detective. All right, so here we go. Give yourself a little bit of space here. You're going to take it up, maybe kick with the other foot if you've been kicking with one foot all along, finding that balance in all of the ways. Again, find the wall. You can do a little bit of a chair pose. Right, so squeeze the ankles and knees together. Bending deeply into the knees, let your butt ride towards the wall. And then pull the chest through. It's like a lightning bolt of energy straight into the thoracic spine. Hopefully you see that, the classic Jerry Lopez lightning bolt right there. And then one foot can drop down, drop it like it's hot. And touch. And then switch. And of course, maybe also, while we're here, maybe pull the gaze through. One foot can play detective as one foot plays scorpion. Gently release and slide back down. 
Okay, so that's with use of wall. I'm going to show you how to kind of tap off of the wall. A little tap, tap, tap a rear off of the wall. Okay, so uh, again, same exact exercise, but now starting to kind of release ourselves from the codependent relationship with wall. <laughs> We've got to start somewhere, of course. Here we go. Can we back up again? So here you might be working your stack. You can still float that foot up of the wall and hold. And again, the wall's right there. So we go, oh, there's the wall. Find your stability. Slowly lower. And again, turn the other foot. You have the wall right there. Slide the foot down. Oh, so delicious. Absolutely love it. And then, of course, maybe, again, one foot to wall. Put that other foot down. And so we slide another foot off of the wall. All right. Gently release. Whew. So when you can do that, then you know for certain that if you flip over into the back bend, you are going to be safe. But it's so crucial. And again, notice I worked multiple ranges of motion, angles of the humerus head bone. All right, so there's your, your traditional forearm balance, gazing between the thumbs. There is the hollow back, because notice when you're gazing between the thumbs, there's a slight angle between the humerus bone and the rest of the spine. And when you go into the hollow back, it's actually more of a straight line, especially between humerus bone and the thoracic spine. So that's that's really, hollow back can be a great place to work that strength building for straight up and down, actually. And then also pulling the gaze through. So you're bringing your chest towards parallel to the floor. We're doing it all right, so you can see. So that's working from here to here to here. <laughs> all these different ranges of motion. And so you're slowly, steadily over time. So don't be impatient, don't try to skip ahead. Take your time, build up the musculature in and around your shoulder joint so that you have the protection to eventually navigate in the middle of the room. And just to show you guys uh, really quick at the end of the tutorial, so it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer one and that's okay. I really wanted to get into all of the different specifics um, of, of the Pinch of My Rouse and Form Balance. So here is the middle of the room, and if you'd like to, you can just watch. Feel free to skip it. Please do until you feel confident working against the wall. Again, you don't want to you don't want to um, fall over into a back bend if you don't have the uh, upper spine mobility. Because if you flip over into a back bend, it's going to be a higher impact. When you create the upper spine mobility, then I'm sure, as I'm sure you can see, you can slowly lower. And again, hopefully, as you're creating the upper spine mobility, you're also creating the strength aspect to insulate that flexibility. All right, so here is the middle of the room, something to work towards. It's okay if you don't attempt it today. Middle of the room forearm balance. All right, here we go. So again, hands can press down. Wrap those elbows in a little bit tighter so that, again, the skin can uh, slide out into a square. Tuck the toes, hips rise up. Dolphin pose, melt heart towards that. Adduct, abduct already. Push the floor away, plug the humerus head bones into the shoulder sockets. One leg extends up, and then little tiny flap takes up, or maybe you just press it up. Connect the legs together at the top, reach out to the balls of the feet. You can flex, you can point, you can point. Give you a little bit of a chin lock. And maybe a little bit of a tuck. Hollow back. Lower. And notice you can kind of use your legs as a weight system. We'll tap, tap, tap through. And then of 
course. I always like to do a hollow back first so that I know the muscles in and around my lumbar are very much activated. Come back up. Delicious. a few of my favorite things. So please use the props and please use the wall until you know that you no longer need them anymore. And definitely don't cartwheel out to the side. Just don't do it. Find the back bend. And there's so much back bending potential here, but also potential to strengthen your back bends so that you're like elastic steel. All right, so hopefully this tutorial is well received. I hope to see you all doing forearm balance, potentially busting some, some hollow backs and some scorpions, of course. But again, do the hollow back first before you navigate into the scorpion so as to protect your lower spine. So, so crucial. And find that balance between the masculine and the feminine energy channels, polarities in your heart space uh, so that you don't unnecessarily seep out energy with too much feminine energy or so that you're not blocking yourself off with too much masculine energy. This is where the Merkaba is, which is why the Yantra for Heart Chakra has two juxtaposed triangles like the Star of David, right? When they start to spin, it's kind of like, all right, your Merkaba, your light body vehicle is activated and you're able to access the Safa Gunas, Throat Chakra, Brow Chakra, Astral Project, and really you're, you're just able to see with fine-tuned analysis how the inner space cosmos is interacting with new space as you expand consciousness in your field. So this is a quintessential tool for the alchemist, for the metaphysicist seeking to raise their own vibrational frequency and the vibrational frequency of our collective consciousness. So thank you for participating and expanding in your own field, your own microcosm. It truly does benefit all beings. And enjoy your, your practice. Namaste.